Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today we're going to make the Japanese parasol quilt and this is a pattern by Makawa. It's a free pattern so it will be in the description below. Julie is going to show me how to make this quilt. So I'm just walking around the shop now choosing my fabrics and I've come across this range called Lux by Makawa. And I really like this range. I think it's going to work really well. It's bright and colourful. As you can tell, I really like it because I keep touching it. So let's go and make a start. So we're off to the studio now. So here is the parasol quilt that Julie has made. And we're lucky enough to have Julie with us today. So welcome to the sewing studio, Julie. Thank you, Katrina. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. So I'm going to hand over to you because I know you want to talk about some of the blocks. Yes. Um, if I say to start with, this particular quilt, although it's great fun to make, is probably not for a beginner. It's quite intricate. Um, there's lots of different fabrics and it's a case of being organised when you, when you lay it all out to start with and when you sort out what's going where. There are four different blocks. These four centre blocks are all the same. You've got the side blocks. They're different blocks. There's eight of those that are the same. And then there's the four corner blocks, which are all the same. Some fabrics are incorporated in all, all of the blocks, just laid wow. out in a different way. Some are, yeah, like this, this one is only in the, the centre four. Right. So it stands out quite a bit and I've used that on the border. Yeah, um, lovely. If you want to have a go at it but, and you don't feel confident about starting off with something like this, I've simplified it. I've made a simple block that I'll go through with you, Katrina, just to show you how to do it. <laughs> okay, so we're talking Katrina being organised and you all know that that's not what I am. So this is going to be a challenge for me. <laughs> so let's go over and get started. So I see we've got the pattern we have, printed off. We have. And I understand the first thing is to trace the pattern, is that right? It is. Um, okay. This is probably, especially if you're doing the whole quilt, um, the tedious bit. There's two templates, template one and template two. You will need four of these per block. Right, okay. So if I go over here and show you, um, and here's one you've prepared here's earlier. Here's one I've prepared earlier. Let's move that out of the way. So that's printed off the computer. Yeah. Those two sewn to get um, stitched together down the red line. And then you print them off again. And when they're joined, that is your block. Right, okay. So if you're doing the whole quilt, yeah. that's 16 blocks. So you will need 32 of these. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's, that's the boring bit. So you print it off. Uh, there's a variety of things that you can use um, to stitch your fabric onto. This is the foundation piecing part. I found the best one is actually to use baking parchment. Right, okay. So you'd put your piece of parchment over... Well, let's go that way. Over your pattern. Over your pattern. It. Trace all the lines as carefully as you can. Yeah. And then you're going to have to do that 32 times. Okay. But as I say, I've, I've simplified the block. So what I've done is I've just made up enough for two, what I will make into cushions to go with the quilt. Oh, that's so a good idea. I've used some of the fabric that I had left over. Yeah. Um, and as I say, I will make them up into just a couple of cushions just to throw on the bed as scatter cushions or what have you. So I noticed that this is a particular shape and this is a particular size. So is there a template in the pattern that we've got this piece of fabric like this? Yes, there is. It's oh, right. that Perfect. there. I just cut it out of a piece of cardboard okay. and then I use my cutter to, to cut the fabric. You, know, you can trace it on, onto your fabric, however is you find easiest really. So that is your piece of fabric. Piece number one, yeah. This is, once again, in the pattern, all, as you can see, all the strips, all the triangles, I beg your pardon, are joined together with strips. Okay. These are all cut at one and a half inches. Right, okay. You asked about or which fabrics to choose. Um, it depends on, 
I'll say, I've kept it simple for, for purposes of today. And what I've done is I've started to make up a block. So I've used the pink fabric in all four corners. Yeah. And then just the lilac and the black. Right. Well, that works really well, actually, doesn't it? I, I like think that. so. Yeah. And as yeah. I say, it's what I had left. So and this, this dark in the corners. Sorry, I'm being really eager beaver, I know. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, so this is what we're going to do yeah. here. Perfect. So that is right. step one. So okay. we'll put that to one side so as not to confuse the issue. Um, I found when I was doing it, especially if you're going to do the whole thing, lay your fabric out in the order in which you're going to sew it. So we yep. started with the lilac. My next piece will be the pink. Yeah. Then the black. Yeah. Then the pink. Right. OK. It's just easier because especially I keep harping back to the big quilt. But when you've got different blocks and lots of fabrics, if you're methodical about it, yeah. once you get into the swing of it, it's... I won't say it's a piece of cake, but it's a lot easier. So this is going to be my challenge, Julie, yes. for me to be organised and methodical. <laughs> but we'll we'll give it a go. So right, you've made your templates. What you do, you number them all as you know, as per the template. You piece your fabric on the back of the template. Right, right side up. Yeah, that's the bit you have to remember. And I found when I was doing it, I actually wrote it down. Right. So for the first, once you've done the first one, yeah, it's it's logical. It's like muscle memory, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. So okay. you pin that on there, and you're going to sew along that line between one and two. Right. So can I just move this to the mm -hmm. middle camera because I just want to check before I go off and machine this. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to end there. Yes. Right. You're okay. just sewing on the line. Try not to and go over to it. There. If you go over it a little bit, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. Um, but keep on the line as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to go to the machine and do this. And you may remember, those of you that saw our YouTube live with Jeanette, we had a question about foundation piecing. So... I'm hoping that this will answer those questions. <laughs> it's not something that I'm confident with, hence why I've got Julie here <laughs> to show me what to do. So I'm just going over to the machine now. So I've done the sewing, Julie, from there to there. Yep. Um, I think that's quite neat for me. It actually, is very neat, think. Katrina. Well done. <laughs> now, because I'd positioned it carefully, there's probably not going to be much cutting involved. Right. But what you want to do, fold back the paper. You do not want to cut through your paper. Right. Ooh. You want one of those. And oh, no. Let me grab you a ruler. Hold on. So this is probably going to be require very little cutting. When you get further down the road, it gets a little bit... Right, so cut, oops, quarter of an inch, as I stress, do not cut through your paper. Okay, do not cut through your paper. No, fold it back. <laughs> yeah. No, I press every time. Okay. A little bit time consuming, but I find it keeps everything much flatter and easier to work with. Okay. So that's your first segment. You can put that iron down. Oh, it's course, my magic yeah. iron, Julie. Yeah. That's it. It'll pop up now. Oh, <laughs> I want one. I want one. <laughs> then your next piece. So that is going to end up there like that. So yeah. Can I just move that over here? So we, because yeah. we've got a closer camera. So okay. do you want to do that again? That's so going to end up like that's that. As per that there. Yeah. So to sew it. Right sides together. Once again, you're going to flip it over and sew on the right side. But before you start sewing, just double check. Right, see, I haven't got that far right. enough over. So can I just point this out? Because this is my big mistake. Okay. And this is what puts me off of foundation piecing. Mm -hmm. Because I've done this in the past. So you've, you've got it and you think, right, I'm going to flip it back. I'm going to over-exaggerate here. And then when I turn it over, 
I can see I'm too short yeah. and I yeah. end up wasting so much fabric. And that's one of the reasons I've been put off. Yeah. It, it, once again, once you get into the flow of this, you'll know where to put it. Right. Well, okay. roughly, roughly. Okay. So um, I'll let you do it properly. So if you look at the back. Yeah. You know, you're going to sew along that line and you want a quarter of an inch. So it's there or thereabouts. Okay. So on there and I'm going to put it more or less on the thing. Flip it on over right. just yeah. to make sure. See, that needs to come down a bit. Yeah. Down to there. That needs to sit along the edge. Yeah. So... If you pin it. Oh, I like the way I've got to pin it because yeah. if I get it wrong, it's going to be my fault, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but you do need, you can do it that to start with. Oh, I need to pin it the but other way. You won't need I? to be able to pit, take the pins out as you sew. Right. So hold on. If I just put one like this for now. To hold it together. And then let me pin the other side. Flip it over. Oh, I'm glad I'm having a lesson and I'm not doing this one. Right. It looks like it's going to take forever to do one block. Once again, once you get into the swing of it, it all becomes quite straightforward. She says. Oh, this is me you're teaching. <laughs> straightforward. Right. Let me take that out. Right. So I'll go over to the machine now. And, and you're going to sew along. And sew from there. From there. To there. Yeah. Okay. I've gone a bit wibbly on this one. Don't worry about it. <coughs> it is quite forgiving. As long as you're not way over the line. And it is a surprisingly accurate way of piecing. Okay. So that's your next bit. So same again. Yeah, I'll let you do it this time. Oh, good Lord. So Qu I've got to do it the other way because oh, I'm left-handed. Yeah. Sorry. So quarter right. of an inch. So put the quarter of an inch on the paper for me because I'm the other way round. Yeah, quarter of an inch on the paper and then trim it so you've got a quarter of an inch seam. Being careful not to cut the paper. Yes. Okay. I have done that and it's really annoying. <laughs> so back to the iron and then just give it a press. So you keep doing that. Your next yeah. piece would be the a white strip. Yeah. Um, and followed by the black. Yeah. Followed, followed by, by the, the pink. The pink. So. Okay. It'll be like that. Okay. Excellent. Right. So the next bit that goes on now is the white strip. Yeah. Which it's difficult to tell on this. Right sides together. So along the. Yeah, along the line. Along the line. And flip and it. And then you will flip it over. Yeah. And that will be, and you'll do the same on this side. Yeah. And then you're going to put these corner pieces, which I notice are this I lovely. Love them. Yeah. This is Enchanted by Lewis and Irene. Yeah. And I noticed that most of the fabrics are Lewis and Irene fabrics. They're gorgeous and they're so easy to work with. They don't stretch or pull. They're really good quality. I, yeah, I do like them a lot. Oh, and they're lovely. I love the colours. So you do that and the same on, on the, the other same side. same on that side. And then we're going to end up with You are going to end that. up with that. Marvellous. Once again, looking a bit scrappy. Um, when you've done two of these, you're going to trim them down. Right. Here's one I trimmed earlier. Okay. So a quarter of an inch in, out, from yeah. the line. So you've got... You'll then have a thinner strip. Once again, the, the dimensions of the strips are all in the pattern. Yeah. So that gets sewn on... This is longer than it needs to be. Yeah, that gets sewn there. Yeah. Flip that over. 
and then flip it over join that to there once this has been trimmed join that to there yeah and that is your block so it will look roughly roughly excellent like and hey presto we hey have presto. one block we have and how many do we need 16 okay 16 to make that okay um, as i say i'm going to turn this into a cushion so it'll look a lot neater when it's when it's yeah. trimmed up put a couple yeah. of borders on it and i think it will look lovely perfect so thank you julie <laughs> you've given me the confidence good i, I feel good. i might want to have a tempt at this now and i might have a go at this yeah. so thank you the good thing about this pattern, um, especially you know, if you wanted to keep it simple and have less fabrics, because you're using a template, it's much easier to follow. It's right. all in sequence. Yeah. You can go wrong, obviously, but it's more difficult to go wrong. And you, there's a lot less wastage. You know, you're going to waste a little bit when you're trimming your fabrics. Yes. Um, but because it's all cut to size plus a bit, very little wastage and much easier to put together. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's been the thing in the past with me is not having the template and then not having enough fabric. Yeah, yeah. So at what point now do you remove your paper on the back? I think in the instructions it says to remove it at this stage. Right. I personally like to get it all put together so I've got my block, yeah. then I take the paper off. And it's very easy. It just... Oh, right, yeah. Tears off along the line where you've So it's stitched. like a little perforation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the beauty of using baking parchment is it's very thin and it tears easily. I tried freezer paper. That's very, very stiff and it's yeah horrible to try and get off. Um, you could try greaseproof paper maybe. Well, I think I'm going to go with this because yeah. this is how you've shown me and I can see how much easier it is with this. Yeah. It does come off very, very easily. Don't just rip it because you yep. might end up ripping your seam. So you have to be, you know, a little bit careful. Okay. But, oh, okay. You know, Wonderful. And then you've got that left. So shall we go over to the quilt we now could. and talk about yeah. how you're going to quilt it, Julie, when you've actually got your batting and ah, your wadding? Right. Suggestions, so. please, Katrina. <laughs> um, finishing it off, on the pattern... It just had a white border, I think. Um, I decided, because I like this fabric so much and I yeah. hadn't used very much of it, I just thought it would... It yeah, frames it really frames nicely, it. Yeah. So actually, I put a yes. narrow border there. Yeah. I think it's cut at two inches. Yeah. And then this, um, a little bit wider, probably cut at three and a half or something something along those and lines. And I noticed, Julie, we've got your trademark <laughs> how you join a border well, and we've yeah. actually got a video we did a video on that how to join your borders and make a feature of your joins and you've got one there yeah. and there's one there so i i love it i love it it is your trademark oh, right. yeah, so just let's think about how we're going to quilt this have you got any ideas no not really um i did think about having a go at twin needle yeah. Down each side. I don't know whether that would be too much. I think um, you could you could do a twin needle or you could do a fancy stitch in the white. Yeah. And you could so you when you do the wavy line, it doesn't have to be straight. So you could do the wavy line meandering up through could, all yeah. of the whites, couldn't you? Like yeah. this. Yeah. And down this way, because it doesn't have to be straight. And it would meander but it wouldn't take away from the fact that you've got yeah. the parasol that's probably, yeah that's shape. nice actually so i, I think, think that's better than doing the twin needle because if i did it on all the white strips it would just be too much i think and also i think because you've got such gorgeous fabric i always think mm. sometimes the quilting can detract from yeah. the fabric yeah. so that's something to think yeah. about so I'd like to say thank you, Julie, for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. And teaching me how to do foundation piecing. Good luck. And sharing this quilt with <laughs> us. Yep, good luck. And hopefully this has been useful for all of you that want to know how to do foundation piecing. And we've been asked to do more complicated quilts. So watch this space. As always, have fun. And I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.